Welcome back to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's guest, but first let's hear from our podcast sponsors. We want to thank Final Forms for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Final Forms is the industry leader in registration, but you have to know this. Final Forms is more than just forms. Final Forms is a team, it's technology, and it's a service that helps schools in the areas of compliance, communication, and even provides risk management solutions. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility, uh, has reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms related to athletics. Final Forms can help with team communication, attendance, and even certification management for coaches. And for athletic directors, Final Forms can help with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that come across your desk. And it does this using secure language translation and ADA compliance. You know, it's time for you to talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started on the Final Forms team. We also want to thank Violet Defense for their support. Violet Defense is dedicated to protecting our world from germs by bringing the power of UV disinfection to everyday spaces. Their patented technology enables them to harness the power of the sun to incorporate ultraviolet light into products and environments like never before. Whether you're ready to implement existing products, or if you'd like to explore researching and developing a custom deployment of their technology for your school, Violet Defense has the solutions and the experience you need. Go to violetdefense.com for more information about their great products. We also want to thank Sideline Interactive. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department, but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year while creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and see exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to say thanks to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they, <clears throat> they are on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They provide a variety of interactive touch screen video consoles and an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to showcase the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For ideas and how to show your school's diverse history and your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or learn more and get started with your digital Wall of Fame tribute. Call them at 614-981-3589 or email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Over 200,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, use Huddle to elevate the play of their teams using video and analytics. Huddle is the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. There's always been analytics, but there's a whole lot more. Huddle's built for every level of play from club and youth teams all the way through high school and college programs. And even the pros are using Huddle to help their athletes play at the highest level. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches of the teams you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and your program and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. 
We also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can find out more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for you and your program by going to hometownticketing.com and talk to their experts. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. And we want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director's Toolbox segment of our podcast. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve every aspect of your athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also gives you access to the 95% of the parents and the student athletes who really love your program. And it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials and then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466. Or you can email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to check the pulse of your students or your parents, you're really missing out. Talk to the folks at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them show you how to take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. Uh, we're going to North Carolina today, and uh, we're going to visit with a new friend, Dr. Erica Turner. Dr. Turner is a certified master athletic administrator, and she's the director of athletics for the Charlotte Mecklenburg School District in Charlotte, North Carolina. Dr. Turner, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I, I want to, I got to correct you though. I'm not doctor yet. I'm still working on it. Almost, oh, okay. almost okay. getting close, All but right. thank well, you so much. We'll, thank you for having me. <laughs> we'll file that away. My apologies, but again, very, no uh, uh, my hat's off to you for, uh, for pursuing that uh, doctoral degree. Very cool. Okay. Thank you. Erica Turner, welcome to the podcast. Um, I met Erica uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was fortunate enough to present at the North Carolina Athletic Directors Conference. Um, you know, she was there. We actually had, uh, you know, uh, one of her athletic directors on the show earlier, but uh, um, doc or Dr. Turner, Erica, we always like to uh, let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where were you born? Where'd you grow up? Um, you know, sports that you did and maybe how your path has led you to your current position. Okay. So I grew up in a small town called Cheryl's Ford, North Carolina, which is located in Catawba County, North Carolina. Okay. Um, and that's near Lenore Ryan University in Hickory. Um, I went to Bandy's High School. I graduated high school in 1990. And while I was in high school, I played basketball and I ran track. Um, upon leaving high school, I received an athletic scholarship to play at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Oh, wow. um, I played there for two years and then I transferred to North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I played there for two years. And um, upon leaving, um, and that was basketball, uh, upon leaving college, I began my teaching career uh, and taught health and PE. So I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in physical education. I have a degree in school administration. I have my EDS degree as well um, and currently working on my EDD. So hopefully be finished within the next year or so. Wow. Uh, um, as we were talking just a little bit, um, you know, Charlotte Mecklenburg, pretty big school district. So um, we're going to get to that, but talk a little bit about that transition from, you know, teacher coach to building AD, you know, how was that? Uh, any, um, you know, memories stick out for you? Yeah, so actually, when I made that transition from teacher coach, I, I, my transition wasn't just building AD, I made the transition to assistant principal slash building AD. And so that was uh, interesting in itself. Uh, to be an assistant principal and an athletic director full-time, both positions. Um, but I got the best of both worlds because I really wasn't ready to let go of coaching, but I knew it was time to transition to something different. Uh, and so I was excited about the opportunity to go into administration. And when the opportunity presented itself that I could be also the athletic director, I said, wow, I get the best of both worlds. I don't really have to give up athletics. And so it was an exciting time for me. And I did that 
uh, three years. And then I got the opportunity to be a, a director of athletics in Alamance County. Um, and so I was the first director of athletics because originally the position just failed under as a duty or responsibility of the assistant right. superintendent. So I got to uh, start that program um, as the director of athletics of Alamance County. And that's when I became a member. Well, really, I was a member of the NIAAA and the North Carolina Athletic Directors Association before that. And so um, uh, once I joined at Newton Conover as the assistant principal. And so that just kind of started my journey as an athletic director. Um, unfortunately, there was a break in there because I became a principal. Uh, I transitioned back home to, to for family reasons. And when I did that, I let go of the AD role and became just a sole administrator. Uh, and I became an assistant principal in the Iredell State School School District, and uh, then moved to the principalship in the Iredell State School School District. Um, then I returned to back to Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools because I did teach and coach in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools before I became uh, an administrator. Um, but I returned back to Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools in 2016 as a principal. Um, and then most recently, in August of this year, I returned back to the athletic director's world as the director of athletics in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. It's something that's always been a passion. So the transition for me has been, it's been hard in the sense that I miss my students. I miss interacting with the students on a daily basis, but it's been easy in the sense that this is, it's a natural transition for me because it's, athletics is a passion of mine. Uh, well, we're certainly glad to have you back over, uh, um, you know, as an athletic director, we say you Thank came you. back from the dark side uh, there as, <laughs> as a principal. Uh, very cool. We're going to take a little deeper dive into that. But uh, for our listeners, we're visiting with Erica Turner. She's the district athletic director for the Charlotte Mecklenburg School District in uh, North Carolina. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thank you to Final Forms for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Final Forms is the industry leader in forms and registration, but you need to know this. Final Forms is more than just forms. Final Forms is a team, it's technology, and it's a service that can help schools in the areas of compliance, communication, and even risk management solutions. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility, has reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that go with athletics. Final Forms can help with team communication, uh, with attendance, and even certification management for coaches. And for ADs, Final Forms can help with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that come across your desk. And it does this using secure language translation, and it's ADA compliant. You know, it's time for you to talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you and your program, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. One more time, that's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started on the Final Forms team. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. We're visiting today with Erica Turner. She's a certified master athletic administrator, and she's the district athletic director for the Charlotte Mecklenburg School District in North Carolina. Erica, uh, we don't um, have a, a district AD or a county AD on that often, and I think it's a unique perspective. We always talk about going from coaching where you're focused on your team to becoming an AD, where now you've got a little bit more global school-wide perspective, but boy, being a district AD where you have multiple schools, you know, multiple athletic directors that you're working with, that's got to be a, a, a unique and interesting, a fascinating, maybe even a challenging experience. Uh, share with our listeners a little bit about that, that difference of becoming a district AD. Okay, well, here in Charlotte Mecklenburg, it's, it's, it's not just about athletics either. So um, I am not just over athletics, I'm over health and PE and driver's ed. I coordinate all the graduations in our district. And so in terms of athletics, I deal with 20 high schools, um, 47 middle schools. Um, in health and PE, uh, I have all the elementary, middle, and high schools when you talk about health and PE. And of course, driver's ed. Um, graduations, I'm currently planning 33 high school graduations uh, with five different venues that we use. Uh, and so all of that in itself is, is an interesting dynamic. 
uh, for me, it's about uh, being impactful more so than being successful. So I understand that in this role, I am here first and foremost for our students, but I'm also here to impact the lives of coaches, to impact the lives of athletic directors. And because I've had experience as a principal, also helping our principals and administrators understanding the, the great impact that athletics can have in your school. So it's about changing that culture across a whole district and Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools is the 17th largest school district in the nation. And so that's huge in itself. And so I own where I am and I, and I kind of enjoy having that kind of responsibility, but it can be kind of nerve wracking and um, challenging at times just because of the, the unique uh, makeup of our district. It's very diverse um, and not everyone is ready for an African-American female leader uh, uh, today. And so even at that, I know that that is an issue for some people and that's just being real. I'm a very transparent person, open person, and I just uh, say it like I see it and um, very transparent. And I know for some people, uh, me being a female and me being an African-American female causes issue and angst, may, uh, if, if I will. But uh, for me, it's an exciting time because now I get to impact the lives of thousands of children. Um, it's personal for me because I have, I had three children. My oldest son is a twin and his twin uh, passed away in a daycare. The significance of that is that my child was in someone else's care when he passed. And so as an educator, you have thousands and for some people it's hundreds of kids in your care that belong to other people. So my role is real for me. I don't, I can't, I don't get caught up in the politics and things of that nature. So every decision I make, I have to keep my student athletes in mind. I have to understand the why. But I also represent the parents because the parents trust us with their students. Uh, and that's hard to do. That was hard for me to do after I lost my child to entrust other people with my other two children. Uh, but so I don't take that lightly. And every decision I make on the district level, I know that I'm impacting thousands and thousands of children and families. And so that's, that's kind of real for me. And, and so um, it is a challenge, but it's also exciting because I feel like that everything that I've gone through, every position that I've had has created me for a moment such as this. Um, and so I wear many hats. Yes, I've been a teacher, a coach. I've been an assistant principal, a principal, a athletic director, a director of athletics. Um, and so I've, wore, I've worn many hats in education, so I see it from a, a different perspective. I have a child who plays sports right now. He's a junior in high school who plays football and basketball and he's on the track team. And so I get it. He's on that recruiting trail right now. And I understand. And so um, it's not a position that I take lightly. It is different because now I, I can't have that tunnel vision I had as a principal because uh, I have to make it right for every school and every community is different. Every need is different, but I have to be able to own every community in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. I have to be able to respect that they have different needs and different wants and things of that nature. It's hard to um, give everybody what they want, but I, I work hard to make sure that it's equitable across the board. Now, this is my, I just started this role August 30th. And so we're in, we're in a transition phase right now. And so it's, it's been difficult for some people to, you know, change is difficult for some folks, but change is necessary. And so we're going through a, you know, yes, transition, new leader, people getting used to uh, Erica Turner, which is, is, is different in itself. Uh, and I understand that and I own that. I'm reading a book by Katrina Adams called Own the Arena. Uh, it's a great book. She used to be the president of the United States Tennis Association. And it talks about owning where you are in life, owning who you are, owning your strengths and weaknesses, and owning your arena, being okay with being the only one in the room uh, sometimes that look like you. And so um, I don't take that lightly. I'm excited about the changes that's coming for Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. Um, there are some successes, but there are some challenges as well to be expected. No, absolutely. Gosh, I really appreciate you, uh, your candor and sharing, you know, that personal uh, aspect. You know, we you know, in our profession, you know, we're all, you know, teachers, we're coaches, uh, some have been assistant principals, you've been a principal. Um, but we're also, you know, human, you know, we're, we're men, we're women, we're, we're parents. And uh, I, I love the way that you, you shared 
you know, this is who I am. This is what I bring to the table. Really, really good stuff. And, and very important for all of us to hear, particularly, you know, our, our younger listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, for our listeners, we're visiting today with Erica Turner. She's a certified master athletic administrator, soon to be Dr. Turner. And right. she's the district athletic director for Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools in North Carolina. We're going to take another quick break, but we're coming back. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to say thank you to Huddle. Remember at Huddle, we power sports. Over 200,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, use Huddle to help their teams play better using video and analytics. Huddle's the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus, there's always been analytics, but there's so much more. Huddle's also built for every level of play, from club and youth programs, all the way through high school and college teams. And even the pros are using Huddle to help their teams play at the highest levels. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches of the college teams that you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more, about what Huddle can do for you and your program and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Welcome back, everyone. We're visiting with Erica Turner, Certified Master Athletic Administrator. Erica, uh, we always like to ask our ADs about the mentors that they've had in their life. Uh, none of us get here on our own. So who are some of the people that helped you along the way? So uh, most importantly, my family. So I, I, I'm a mix, but of course everybody is, but my mom and my dad. And I often tell people, either you want Richmond or you want Berkeley, which one you want? Because I got a little bit of both of them in me. Um, but I am grateful for the life lessons that my parents have uh, shared with me along the way. I, one in particular, I, I remember uh, being the only African-American on my basketball team. I felt like everybody was doing me wrong. And I wanted my daddy to go complain and all this good stuff. And he was like, I will not do that. And you will go out there and you will play. You will do your best. If you get 20 seconds or two minutes, when you go out on that court, you make something happen. So... I've, I've carried that life lesson with me throughout my life. If I, anything that I do, I got to make something happen. I got to be impacted. Um, whether I get a year or two years or 20 years, I got to make an impact. Um, and just watching my mom and my dad throughout life and my older sister and my brother, they all went to the military um, and I was the one that went to college. And so uh, just learning those life lessons from, I'm the baby of the family. So uh, I've taken something uh, from all of my, immediate family members, and I appreciate that, and still to this day. In terms of my educational role um, as a principal, I remember two teachers in particular that still stay in contact with me. To this day, we make sure that we meet once a month for lunch, and, and uh, Dee Gibbs and Chuck Walker were teachers at my high school, the only two African-American teachers at my high school who kept us encouraged and kept us on the right track, and in spite of the challenges, you can be successful. Those are the things that they told us, that you, you move on anyway, and what God has for you is for you, and nobody can stop that regardless of what they try. And so I'm excited uh, that I am still in contact with those teachers from high school. And I graduated high school in 1990, um, and they still keep up with me. They still encourage me. They still pray for me, uh, and that's important for me. In the athletic director world, I was connected immediately to two um, ADs in the Durham area um, when I became an athletic director at Newton Conover in Catawba County, which is three hours from Durham. Uh, but they immediately reached out to me and wanted to be my mentors. That's Bob Hill and Larry McDonald, both of whom are retired, but I'm still in contact with them. So they still mentor me to this day. Those relationships I don't take lightly, and I'm a, a, a lifelong learner. I'm a reflective uh, practitioner where I'm always reflecting on my leadership, even though I'm 22 years in the educational world, in the game, there's always still room to learn and grow. And so I don't take that lightly. I'm still getting advice from my mentors. I'm still keeping in contact because those relationships are very important. So they continue to mentor me. Um, and so that's the only way that you can be successful because you can't do this work alone. 
can't do it in isolation. You always have to have people around you. So I learned every day from my mentors, but being in education, I learned the most from our students and just being with student athletes and students in general. Um, that's what keeps me going. Kids, period, keep me going. And so really the students are my mentors too, because they keep me up on the latest technology and social things that's going on, keep me kind of hip to what's you know going on in the world. So I know how to make my adjustments. So everybody that comes into my life is a growth opportunity for me. And I learned something from it. So I'm grateful for that. Well, again, our regular listeners hear me say this all the time, but I just love to hear the stories about the mentors. And I love the way that you wove uh, a lot of different people in there, you know, from family to colleagues and even, even the students. Uh, you know, that's something I learned far too late in my career, the value of, you know, of listening to uh, your students. Um, Erica, uh, we mentioned earlier, you're um, a certified master athletic administrator. Um, I think it's important for our younger ADs and even the older ones uh, to hear about the journey that, you know, you and I take and others have taken through the state association and the NIAAA. So share a little bit about that journey. How'd you hear about your state association? How'd you get involved? And, and how did all that lead to you uh, becoming a CMAA? Right. And so, you know, of course, the state association, you know about it when you are a coach because you have to stay within the rules and the policies. And so you have interactions with the state association when you're at the coaching clinics as well. But when I transitioned to the athletic director world and I learned about the LTI classes and the courses that we could take, when I took my first course, I was hooked um, with the NIAAA. And I, I think my first national conference was in San Antonio, Texas. Um, that I went to. And I, I was able to serve on a blue ribbon panel for Title IX when I was out in San Antonio, Texas. And I, as I started taking those courses, I became even more inspired, uh, just listening to other athletic directors' journeys, learning more about the role of the athletic director and how important it was and how impactful uh, the role was. And I wanted to learn more. It made me hungry to learn more and wanted to do better. But it also opened my eyes to a lot of the, um, not only the liabilities, but the possibilities um, in this role and how important it is in a school to make sure athletics is running um, uh, with integrity uh, and how it impacts the lives of kids. And so I just became more excited. I'm that, I'm that hungry, I'm driven. I'm, I'm personally driven to always want to do better um, and so when I tell you I wear a lot of hats, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a minister, uh, I'm a notary. <laughs> and so I'm just kind of driven. I've, all, I've always been that way. I want to learn. I want to soak it up uh, because I also know that I'm impacting the lives of now when you're in a leadership role, it's not just about the kids. Right. And so when you're a teacher, you're impacting the lives of the kids. But as a leader, as an administrator, I not only represent the kids, I represent the kids, the parents the administrators, the coaches, the athletic directors. And so I, I don't take that lightly. And so I need to be in the best position to be able to support and help them when that time arrives. And so if I don't keep, if I don't keep honing my craft, if I don't keep getting better at what I do, I can't help them get better. And so it's one of those things you lift as you climb. It's, it, as far as, as I'm concerned, as more, the more I grow, if you're connected to me, you're going to grow with me. Um, and that's important to me. And so um, I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah. No, very good. Uh, and, you know, you, you talk the talk and you walk the walk, because uh, you were in my class, uh, and Ed Gilroy's class there in North Carolina, for uh, the partnering with parents LTC 716. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, well done. Thanks for taking that class. Now you got to go out and teach that, uh, you know, at, at your conference next year. Absolutely. I'm ready. I'm good. ready. For a visitor, so we are uh, meeting today with Erica Turner. She's a certified master athletic administrator, and she's the district AD for the Charlotte Mecklenburg School District in North Carolina. We're going to take another quick break, but we'll be back. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department these days, but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year, while also creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com 
or call them at 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com to see exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. We're visiting with Erica Turner, Certified Master Athletic Administrator. Erica, uh, one of the things we try to do with the podcast is this idea of sharing best practices. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, what are some things that you all do in Charlotte Mecklenburg that when you take a step back, you know, you can say, boy, we really do a great job with this. Uh, do you have any best practices? Yeah, so it's important. That I say it all the time that we keep our why in front of us. And so my why is, is all around me. I don't know if you can see behind me, but my children are on the wall. My baby that's deceased is on the wall. And so I got things all around my office that re remind me of my why, because you can get caught up and distracted in the politics of education, especially on the district level. And so I don't get caught up in the politics. I got to keep my wire in front of me. And that's students and student athletes. And so the, the first order of business when I took over this job in August was to create a student athlete advisory council. And so that could be a huge undertaking in a district this size. But I have a student athlete, male and female from each high school on a council with me that we meet once a month. And I'm just so excited about this group because now they're starting to come together. It took us a minute to get warmed up. Uh, but they're starting to come together and they are right now in the planning stages of a youth leadership or student athlete summit just for student athletes will be held at Carowinds on April the 29th. The students have uh, spearheaded this whole thing. I'm in the background. I just make sure they have the resources, but they have worked and got the sponsorship. They've gotten this whole summit paid for uh, Scott Clark Toyota, the Jamie Kimball Foundation. Everything is paid for. They're working on the agenda. They have uh, people coming in from the NCAA Eligibility Center to do some presentations. Uh, pro athletes coming to be guest speakers. They're going to talk about things that not just athletics, they're going to talk about things that they experience uh, as students and as athletes and how they can be impactful in their schools. Carol Wins has agreed to sponsor up to 350 student athletes. So that's 18 student athletes per school. They get to take part in this event and they are planning it all by themselves. And so just to create those leadership opportunities and what they don't know is that when they finish this thing, they're gonna have internship opportunities that's gonna be made available through Scott Clark Toyota, one of our major partnerships here, but they have spearheaded it. They have met with Scott Clark Toyota. They met with the Jamie Kimball Foundation. Sometimes I'm on the call and sometimes I'm not. I've empowered them to be leaders and they are so excited. The best part for me is, that, and this wouldn't have happened if the athletic directors from each school has not, have, if they didn't support this initiative, and they did, they supported it. Um, it's not adding a lot of work to their plate, uh, but they get to watch their kids shine too. And so I'm excited that these kids are coming together from different schools. Now, where you're on that athletic field, you're comp competing against each other. But in this arena with the Student Athlete Advisory Council, these kids are coming together from all schools all walks of life, and they're working on a project together. And it's an amazing thing to see. And I just sit back in awe. I answer their questions, and I'm just letting them do what they do. And so I'm just so excited for them to see that initiative. The other initiative that we've started in North Carolina is that we have the high school girls flag football program going on. And so the Carolina Panthers reached out to me, and they said, we want to start this league as a pilot program, hoping that North Carolina will sanction as a sport. Can you get about six or seven schools to pilot it for me? I said, no, ma'am, we need all 20 of our schools. And I said, we're going to do it with all of them. She said, that's unheard of. I said, not in Charlotte, Mecklenburg. And so just got off a call with them and we're planning. They're playing every Saturday. It's all 19 of our high schools. When I say 20 high schools, we do have a new high school opening up next year. So they're not quite open yet, but they're in the planning stages. They will be here next year. So we all have 19 high schools that's playing high school girls flag football. And we have a private school, Charlotte Catholic, that has joined us to make it 20. And we play on Saturdays and Sundays. And the um, Panthers is, is sponsoring it. They gave us the money and we made it happen. And the kids are so amazing. The girls, we had one, one school, we had 115 girls come out for high school flag football. And so it has been the most amazing experience on Saturdays. 
Uh, we got it coming up this Saturday. Uh, we got two more Saturdays. And then on Sunday, May 15th, we have the culmination event. The championship thing will be played at the Carolina Panther Stadium. Uh, it's free for the um, spectators, uh, but it's, it's the first that's been done in the state of North Carolina. So we are being trailblazers in this. And it's so exciting being that this is the 50th anniversary of Title IX. And so we, we kind of made the announcement on National Girls and Women in Sports Day in February. And the amount of feedback and excitement surrounding this high school girls football program has been unbelievable. Uh, and how everyone has jumped on board uh, to help us out. We, we, we have adult flag football leagues around Charlotte that has volunteered their time to help coach, to referee, uh, to be a part of this. It has been the most amazing experience and we get to say at Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools that we started that, that we are the trailblazers in that. Um, and just to see everybody come together as a group, that is just unheard of. Um, I will say that the Panthers even said when we did the jamboree to open up and all 20 schools was in one location, she was like, I didn't know how this was going to work. I said, you know, well, it worked. And it was the most amazing experience. And the girls are real competitive. Uh, they out there talking junk, just like they... <laughs> Like, like they're on a football field for real. Um, it, it's been amazing. And so I'm excited that we have been able, we got national attention uh, from the NFL uh, about our 20 uh, schools playing. And so I can't wait till Sunday, May 15th to see the culmination event, the championship game. So those are just two initiatives district-wide because I think it's important for the student athlete advisory council is very important just because you keep your students in front of you. I think sometimes as athletic directors that sometimes we can get caught up in the busyness of being an athletic director, setting up a game, making sure the announcements are right, that we forget about people. We forget about why we do what we do. And so when I get the Student Athlete Advisory Council involved, it keeps student concerns, issues in the forefront because it's not just about the competition. It's educational-based athletics. We get to teach our kids so many things through athletics, the leadership opportunity, creating internship opportunities through athletics. And it's not really just about the athletics. When they go with Scott Clark Toyota, they, they can do graphic design. They can learn communication skills. They can learn marketing skills. But it's important that we leverage our positions to create as many opportunities for our student athletes that we can um, and, and teach them life lessons through athletics. Because if it was not for athletics, I don't think that I would be as strong as I am today after losing a child and going through what I went through with the loss of a son um, it was my teammates from, from college. It was my teammates and my coaches, and it was my, the, the life lessons that I learned through athletics that helped me be able to cope and persevere through adversity. Uh, and so those are some of the other things that we have to bring to the forefront. And I think athletics is a great vehicle for that. And that's what we've been able to do here in Charlotte Mecklenburg in, short, in a short amount of time. I just started in August. And so in the first six months, we have already started changing the culture for athletics. It's not just about competition. I say it all the time, it's educational based athletics. It's bigger than the competition. It's not just about the wins and losses. You get caught up in trying to win games. Sometimes you don't do it the right way. And so it's important that we do things the right way because it's gonna create those opportunities for our student athletes. No, absolutely. Uh, student athlete leadership uh, has a very special place. That was my uh, CMA project uh, many years ago, uh, we helped develop that at, at one of the schools I was at, one of the things I'm really proud of. And as you said, getting the kids involved and letting them kind of lead and, and just being there for them, but letting them take charge is great. And just um, this very morning, I uh, did a, a Wednesday Wisdom interview with Candace Mitchell uh, from USA Football. I don't know if you've ever met Candace, but I think I should connect both of you. Um, she was talking about the growth of flag football across the country. And she mentioned how, you know, the NFL is involved, but mm -hmm. USA football also has grants for areas that, that want to start it up and, and keep it going. So I'm going to connect the, the two of you, uh, Please do. At, at the end of the show here. Um, also, uh, we'll do this at the end of our interview, but if one of our listeners wants to reach out and pick your brain and uh, find out more about how you do things at Charlotte Mecklenburg or, or just other things, what's the best way that they can get a hold of you? Uh, you can send me an email. Uh, my email is Erica Turner or Erica R. Turner. Erica is spelled funny. It's E R I C I A. So it's Erica R. Turner 
at CMS for Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools dot K12 dot NC dot US. Or you can call me here at the office at 980-343-6980. Okay. We'll give out that information again at the end of the podcast. And I'm going to guess it's probably on the uh, NIAAA's uh, membership portal as well. So you can check that uh, out. Yeah, either that one. I think they have both my personal email and my work email. So yeah, it's on, it's on that website. Okay. Eric Turner, uh, Certified Master Athletic Administrator. We're going to be back with some more. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to say thank you to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they are on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They've got a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or learn more and get started with your digital Wall of Fame tribute. Call them at 614-981-3589 or you can email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. Welcome back everyone to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest today is Erica Turner. She's the district athletic director for the Charlotte Mecklenburg School District in North Carolina. Erica, one of the questions we've been asking our ADs um, has to do with this idea of uh, social awareness, even social justice, if you will. So how can an athletic director do a better job uh, for their stakeholders, for the kids, the coaches, the parents, the community? How can they do a better job of being socially aware? So it goes back to my leveraging is the student voice, right? And talking to the students often. And, that, and that's one of the reasons why I created the Student Athlete Advisory Council, because they, they will tell you things. They will talk to you. They will talk to you about their concerns and their issues, but also having that opportunity to talk to parents. And so part of that is being visible. And so this is a large school district, but every day in, my, in the afternoon, I'm going to somebody's school to show up at an event, whether it's middle school, high school. Of course, I can't go everywhere all the time. One, my son is participating. So I actually went to a track meet yesterday. He was there, but there was also four other schools there. And so I make sure that I'm visible, I'm accessible, that I listen uh, to the concerns. They don't always agree with my answers, but a lot of times they don't, it's not that they're looking for uh, an answer. They just want me to listen. And so parents, a lot of times, just want me to hear their concerns and hear them out. And so people are actually shocked when I say, okay, I'll come to a meeting. A parent wanted to meet and I said, I'll come to you. Where's your office? And I, I, I'll take that time to come and go meet and talk to individual parents if I can make it happen. And so I think that's what, that way it keeps me aware. I can't just sit in this office and know what's going on in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools. And again, each, each, each area of Charlotte is different. The, the needs are different from the west side of Charlotte to the to the east side of Charlotte, it's just different issues. And so it's important that I'm visible and they see me, they can talk to me, um, they can ask me questions and I'm truthful. Um, and I know that's hard for some people to do, but I don't, I don't walk around in fear because it could be uh, an angst situation because the parents could be upset about something. You know, athletics can create some tension sometimes. And so, um, but it's just, I'm very confident in who I am uh, in this role. And so I don't have anything to hide. I'm human. We make mistakes. And so you address it and you move on. And so they just need to know that you're hearing that. But that also keeps me socially aware. I know what's going on in the community because I'm out in the community. I'm talking to them and I'm listening to them. I'm trying to create solutions. And whether we come up with the right solution or the solution they think is the best, they know that my heart is in the right place and I'm here to help them. And so You got to keep those in the forefront. And that's why I say we can't get caught up in doing the business of everything that we forget about people. So even as athletic directors, I tell my ADs, you know, you're responsible, making sure your principal don't get blindsided. The communication is key. Being accessible, being visible, make golf just as important as you make football. You know, make the smaller sports that tennis got to be just as important as basketball. And so whatever you do for football, you got to do for tennis. And so you got to show up for all of that. And that, that changes the dynamics of everything and, and, and keeps you focused on the social differences and, 
things that's going on in the community so you can help address those things and help uh, bridge the gap, so to speak. Uh, I, I love how you just continually weave those themes of, you know, connections and relationships and communication uh, throughout the message, you know, so very important. Um, this has been really cool sitting down with you again, even if it's virtual uh, and chatting, we got to talk a little bit up uh, uh, in North Carolina, uh, but this has been a lot of fun, but we're not done yet. Uh, we okay. always wrap up with uh, the Athletic Director's Toolbox, uh, which is sponsored by Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Uh, you've already established that you certainly know your way around the world of athletics, but uh, in just a minute, I'm going to challenge you to send out a brand new athletic director on their very first job, but I'm only going to let you put three things in their toolbox. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and hear from Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack, and when we come back, we're going to find out what Erica Turner is going to put in her athletic director toolbox. Please stay with us. Okay. We want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director Toolbox segment of our podcast. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you as an athletic director to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also connects you with the 95% of the parents and the student athletes who really love your program. And it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials and then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466. Or you can email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the folks at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them show you how to take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're just about ready to wrap up this episode. We've been visiting with Erica Turner, Certified Master Athletic Administrator and the Director of Athletics for Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools in Charlotte, North Carolina. Coach, um, we already established that uh, you're a very experienced uh, athletic director, but uh, what three tools would you put into a brand new athletic director's toolbox? Uh, the first thing I would ask them to think about two words, and that's image and integrity. And when I say that, image is what people think you are. Integrity is what you really are. Um, and so, and I say that because people think because they win all these games, that they're these greatest coaches in the world. But if you win those games and you cheated and you, you've recruited kids to your school that shouldn't be there, then those, those wins doesn't mean a hill of beans to me because... <laughs> You have not taught our kids anything. You have not taught them to persevere. You have not taught them how to lose with grace. You know, you taught them how to cheat to win. And so it's important that you understand, don't gauge your success on wins and losses. It's about how you run your program and make sure you're always running your program and lead with integrity um, and do what you know is right and keep students at the forefront. What's best for kids? What's best for kids? You got to keep that going. The second thing I tell my athletic directors is accountability. It's hard to be accountable because sometimes you'll be out on that lonely limb by yourself. You got to hold yourself accountable and you got to hold your, your coaches accountable, the student athletes accountable, and you got to be consistent with your, your expectations and your rules and make sure you communicate those um, clearly. Make sure that whatever is good for the football team is good for the baseball team and you got to be consistent across the board in your rules and expectations. Uh, because the inconsistencies will get you in trouble, um, especially with the parents. You didn't do this for the football team. Why are you doing it for the baseball team? So making sure that you're accountable, whatever expectations that you place for. And so I gave an entry plan when I came into this role. And I'm account when you put it in writing, it makes me accountable. So a lot of people don't like to put things in writing because they know they got to be accountable. For it. Well, I'm, I'm accountable. I'm self-accountable. I don't need anybody to micromanage me. So everything that I have put on that entry plan, I have started. Uh, because I said it and I shared my entry plan with my athletic directors, with the principals and with the coaches. Um, so they knew where I was going. They know my vision. And so I'm clear with that on where I want to be. But I do that for several reasons. So they can hold me accountable. You said that you were going to do this. 
And so accountability is huge and it's big. It keeps you focused. But I guess the third toolbox would be create the culture that you want. Uh, I used to tell my teachers as a principal, I'm not responsible for your morale. I choose to be happy every day that I walk in my building. I want to create the culture that I want. I want a family atmosphere. I want people to enjoy coming to work every day. I want people to uh, to see the, the, the glass half full as opposed to the glass half empty. I want you to see the positives that can come out of this. If you choose to focus on the negative, of course, it's gonna. that's what it's going to be, right? And so whatever you pour into people is what's going to come out. So I just choose to be positive. I choose to enjoy myself every day. And I have to set boundaries in order to be able to do that because people want to come to you with negative things all the time. And so one of the ways I set boundaries, I'm, I got I to gotta be flexible. I got to have that balance, work-life balance too, because I'm a single parent uh, that's supporting children. And, and, and my son is a junior athlete. And so I remember being at a track meet and some parents wanted to talk to me. I said, no, I'm mama, I'm mama today. You got to call me tomorrow. So being okay with setting those boundaries um, and creating the atmosphere that you want. And so right now, I'm excited about creating the atmosphere that I want in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools. Are there some challenging times? Absolutely. But I know in about three to five years, all of that is going to smooth itself out and I'll see the fruits of my labor. And so you have to go through that. You have to get used to being uncomfortable um, in order to grow. And so, uh, but that's the, I don't know if I had three, but consistency, setting boundaries, accountability, integrity, image, all of that is important. But the biggest thing is lead with integrity. And sometimes that's a hard thing to do uh, because you're going to find people wanting to cheat to do some things. People want to take the easy route. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's your, you're, you're the face of the athletic program. Um, so uh, you got to represent well. And so I hope that was helpful. But, and just let your passion shine. I, I think when people see me, they see my passion in what I do every day. I want that to be evident every day. And I choose to focus on what's right with athletics as opposed to what's wrong. It's important that I fix those things that are wrong, but I'm not gonna put it out in the forefront and focus on it where everybody can see it. I want everybody to see the positives uh, and what, 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 how athletics can positively impact your life. Um, and so, but behind the scenes, I'm working on those negative things too. Uh, so it, it, you gotta take the good with the bad, but the most important thing is that people see your passion and you lead with integrity. No, absolutely. I, and uh, believe me, I got all those tools written down in the, in the toolbox for you. I love the, you know, the, the passion. There's no question. Uh, it, it came through this entire interview. Um, Thank you. Erica, once again, if one of our listeners wanted to reach out and pick your brain and listeners, I certainly encourage you to do so. What's the best way that they can get a hold of you? My email address is Erica R. Turner, E R I C I A R. Turner, T U R N E R, at cms.k12.nc.us. Or you can call me here at my office at 980 343 6980. Erica Turner, Certified Master Athletic Administrator, thanks so much for being on the podcast today and all the best moving forward. Thank you. And thank you for the invitation. I really enjoyed it. Oh, it's been great. Uh, for our listeners, remember the Zoom recordings of all of our interviews are being uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening today. Come back again just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. And before we go, we want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can find out more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for you and your program by going to hometownticketing.com and talk to their experts. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. Thanks again for listening to the Educational Lady Podcast. We'll see you next time uh, with our next guest. Have a great day.